Hi, Andy. Uh, before we get started, I thought I should tell you that you always have to make sure you have the right yarn and enough yarn for each project that you're working on. And you need to know um, what kind of um, hook size to use. Your pattern usually tells you the hook size. I just grabbed an I9 5.50 millimeter. And I wanted to show you that when you read the yarn labels, that it tells you if there's a dye lot. And when there's a dye lot, you want to make sure that you get the same dye lot for all of your project. You don't want to have the wrong, like you don't want to have 260 and 261 or 410. You want to make sure that if you're going to be buying yellow for your whole project, that they are all the same dye lot. Some of them say no dye lot. Also, you want to make sure that you have enough of the different yarn. Like if it said you needed 1,000 yards, you'd want to make sure that you got at least four skeins or three skeins. And um, if it said that they wanted four ply medium worsted, you would look right here and here's your four ply medium. Okay, and if you read about the yarn on here, you'll find out different information uh, that you need for whatever project. Like if you were going to be knitting a project, this is, I guess, the ideal size of a knitting needle. Crocheting would be the USA is the nine, which is what I just showed you on here. I have a, an I9 5.50 millimeter, okay? And that's what it says, use a 5.50 millimeter crochet hook, all right? And um, I don't like really using like part of one brand and part of another because they'll shrink it different, shrink different ways. And you want to make sure if you're not, um, if you're making something for let's say a brother who's just going to throw it in the wash machine, that the yarn is, um, that it is washable. You know, um, this one says don't, don't, uh, don't iron it. I don't know what all the symbols mean, but I think this one, the circle means that you can wash it and dry it. But just make sure before you spend a whole bunch of money and invest all your time and then it screws up. Okay. Now I saw the project that you did. And so I know you know how to do a slip knot. And that's the way crochet projects start is the slip knot. And you put it on your hook. I'm used to doing double crochet, so if I keep throwing in a double crochet where it's supposed to be a single, I'm sorry. Um, okay, you were, let's say, going to make, I'll make this up, a scarf. Uh, it might tell you to chain X number of stitches. So to do the chain, yarn over and pull it through, and that's one chain, two chains. So I like working patterns that tell me how many stitches are going to be in each row. So when you get to the end of each row, you can stop and count to make sure you have the right number of stitches. If it tells you you're supposed to have, you know, four singles, two doubles, and a chain two space, make sure that that's what you have at the end of that row. Okay? Let me look at this. So, I'm going to take the hook out a second. So, we have one chain, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And the one that's on the hook, we don't count. If a project says, let's just say single crochet in the um, second chain from the hook, you don't count this one. You wouldn't count this one. I mean, I'm sorry, you would count this one as one and this one as two. Sorry, Andy. So, just don't count the one on the hook. So, we're, when you do a single crochet row, it's usually you have a chain one turning chain. Okay? So, now we're going to single crochet across the bottom chain. <coughs> Each of the stitches is like a V. On the bottom row, a lot of people sort of turn it over and go through this hump on the bottom. I don't. I just go through what I call the back ridge on the first row. So I'm going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So there's number one, number two. Now this is a single crochet, so that's stitch number one. You don't go into the one that's got your stitch in it, you go into the next one now. This one would be two, 
And what we're doing right now is a single crochet. Insert it, yarn over, pull it through. This is three. Insert it, yarn over, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sorry if my little tail keeps getting in the way. Ten. Last one's 11. You don't go through that little knot. That's not even considered a stitch. 12. Okay, so if you were to count, you would count these V's up here on the top. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have 11 stitches. Okay. Now when we go to turn, you do a chain one, and then you turn it. <coughs> Excuse me. You would not crochet into the turning chain. You would crochet into the stitch right below, so the second chain from the hook. Now what you've been doing is going through the back stitch. This would be considered the front of the stitch. Normally you would go through both. If you wanted to do a rib, each time you turn it, you just continue to go through the back. So if a project does not tell you to go through the back, you need to go through both, okay? So here's your turning chain. Here's the first stitch that I'm going to go through. I'm going to insert my hook under both of those, under the V. Yarn over, pull it through, and that's number one. Now we want a total of 11. So we'll do this across. This is two, three, Four. Make sure you don't go back through the same uh, stitch. Five. I'm sorry, my hook got away from my hand. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And the last one. Whoop, sorry, missed it. 11. So now you want to make sure and count. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay? We're going to do one more row of the singles. So you chain one and turn. And you go into the second chain from the hook, which would be the first single. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show you how to also change uh, yarn, um, yarn colors so that you, if you wanted to make a stripe or something. And I'm going to show you how to do like a half double and a double. My favorite stitch is the double. Okay. Now I'm going to stop and count. I'm going to pull up a loop. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So the only way that you get off is by not counting and not making sure that you did that chain 1. So what you've probably been doing incorrectly is not doing a chain 1 at the beginning. Okay? So I'm going to stop the video just so I have a stopping point, And we'll start a new video right after this. Okay, so now we're going to learn how to do, a, a, excuse me, a double crochet. And to do a double crochet, instead of doing the chain one for the single, we do three chains to make a double. So there's one, two, three, and we turn. Now, this chain three counts as the first stitch of the row. So you would not be going into this stitch at the bottom that contains the chain three, you would go into the next one over. So
So in order to do a double, we yarn over, stick it through both of those loops, that V, yarn over, and pull it through. Now you have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull it through two. Yarn over, pull it through two. Now you've, this chain three is considered the first double, and this is the second double. To do the next double, you yarn over, insert it under both of the Vs, grab the yarn and pull it through. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull it through two, yarn over, pull it through two. Yarn over, we'll go into the next one. I'm trying to do this slow so that you can watch and get the hang of it. Almost all the projects I do are double crochets. I hate doing single crochets because they take forever to do a project with a single crochet. If you notice, we did two rows of singles. We've done one row of a double, and the double is twice as high as a single. So. I would rather do the work faster by doing the double. So now, when you were going in at either the beginning or the end, when you think you're done, don't automatically go to the next row. While you're brand new, get in the habit of counting your stitches. Okay, so the chain three was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have our 11 stitches that were single below here and double now. So now let's go ahead and do our chain three and turn. Some patterns when they write them, it will say chain three and turn and then it will go on to the next row. But you still would have to count this on the next row as a stitch. Okay, so yarn over. Remember, don't go into the one here at the bottom of this. You go into the one next to it. I forgot to show you how I have the yarn wrapped around my hand. I'll do that at the end of this uh, row. I also wanted to show you how this last one is slightly different. Because it was a, a turning chain, a chain three, it doesn't look the same at the top. However, if you turn this around and you look at it closely, you'll see there's your little V that you want to go under. You don't want to go in the hole. What I do is I go ahead and yarn over, and then I sort of hook this little nub. I go under the top right here, hook that nub so that I'm under both of the stitches that form that V. Yarn over, pull it through. And so that we don't mess up, let's make sure that we have our uh, 11. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Okay, I don't have anything to cut this collar with right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down, turn it off. I'm going to get another color to show you how to add new color. Okay, Andy. Um, I've cut the yarn, but I wanted to show you. Once you um, decide that you're done with a color, you always have to leave enough of a tail at the end so that you can sew in your uh, yarn tails. So um, what I do is I always yarn over one more time, pull it through, and that will kind of lock it in place. Okay, so now we're going to learn how to um, do another color, add another color at the beginning of a row.
okay? So since I just ended on this end, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to start on the opposite end now. So I'm going to do my slip stitch. Now some people, I'm going to show you a couple different ways that they do it. Some people go ahead and insert their hook, put the slip stitch on, and that's what I do. Or some people put the slip stitch on their hook and then do the sticking their tool, their hook through the first stitch. It's up to you however you want to do it. I just always stick my crochet hook in the first stitch and then I put my um, slip stitch on the hook. Alright, so I'm going to draw it through the first stitch and since the next stitch is going to be a double crochet, I go ahead and do my chain three. Now we're just ready to do double crochets across. And then when you um, finish your project, you have to have a yarn needle so that you can weave in all your ends. However, I wanted to show you, I wasn't planning on going back to the blue, but I will, just to show you um, what I could have done. Let me, now remember this is that end one that has, since it was a chain three, you don't, uh, it doesn't look normal. So you have to make sure that you kind of go under that top loop, hook that um, bottom part, and then you, if you look, you've got two on the hook if you've done it correctly. Yarn over and go through. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the other side and I'm going to not go into the, the one at the base because this chain three is considered the first double. I guess what I should have done is not cut the yarn. I wish I hadn't cut the yarn because I want to show you how you can just keep going. In fact, you can have skinnier um, stripes of the color by um, starting one color at one end and the other color at the other end and just dropping them off at the end of each row. And I'm at the end again. Okay. Well, let me undo that just so I can show you what I'm going to do. Instead of doing the full double crochet in the last stitch, since I'm going to be switching to another color, I'm going to yarn over and start the transition, you know, where you do the yarn over and pull through, and then the pull through. Once you get to the very last portion of the double, we're going to switch to another color. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this blue again. And now I'm not going to put a slip stitch on my hook. I'm just going to get the yarn ready to start crocheting again. And I'm going to yarn over and pull it through. And then tighten it down a little bit with the, the purple just to make sure it doesn't, you know, get loose. So at this point I've got a tail and then I've got the yarn that we're crocheting with. Okay, we're going to chain three with a new color and turn. This first stitch goes with the first one, so we're going to go to the second one. Still doing our double. On our last one, I'm looking for that stitch, and if you do it correctly, when you after you yarn over, go into that top thing, go into that little portion right there, look, and you have two. Okay. 
yarn. Now, we still have the purple yarn over here. So I'm going to work across the blue until I get over to where the purple yarn is at. Let's do a chain three. And turn. Your yarn can get tangled, so you might have to do some untangling. So this first chain three goes with this first stitch, so we go into this stitch right here. <coughs> I think I need to pull out more yarn. I never pull out enough yarn. We're at that last weird stitch because it's a chain three. Okay. Now, I've completed this stitch, but I'm going to show you what you can do is you can run the yarn up the side like this. And I, what I would do is I would back out that last stitch to the point where I didn't do the the final pull through, okay? You can stop holding on to the blue and you can pick up holding on to the purple, okay? Just as long as you're going to go over the side with some single crochets to cover that, okay? If not, you can cut the yarn like we did before and just weave the tail in, okay? So, what I've done is I've yarned over with the, the old color, the purple, and I'm going to pull it through for the last portion of that last double, okay? And now I'm going to just continue on by chaining three. I'm going to turn and I'm going to pull slightly on the old blue so that it tightens that stitch a little bit, okay? And now we're ready to continue on. Here's your chain three. That goes with your first stitch. We're going to go into the next stitch. And I, I know that I have my 11 stitches across, but make sure you, at the end of each row, do the uh, do what I told you, count your stitches. It's the only way you're going to make it accurate. Okay, so I'm at the last one right now. Okay, so basically that's all you're learning how to do right now is your double crochets up here and your single crochets that were down here. And um, you can make yourself a stripe project. You can make, you know, uh, a scarf if you'd like. So um, I'll continue by showing you more videos when you're interested and more fancier stitches. Okay? Hope you're enjoying it, Andy.